what's happened in the last video. Sit together. Okay. And. And here is more, Mr. Dude Man, sir. I opened my eyes and stretched blissfully. I had no desire to stand up as I felt like I was in perfect bliss, muffled in a blanket. There is some sort of weird new age piano harp music. After all, I don't have to go anywhere. As usual, actually. What instrument is this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any plans. So, uh, why shouldn't I just sleep? I rolled over and stared at the old worn wallpaper covering the curved wall. I wonder how long ago the time that they renovated this room was. And why does here have the wallpaper instead of bare wood anyway? Vague warming bells began ringing somewhere deep in my mind. I guess this music does sound like bells. Somewhat. I threw the blanket away in a frustrated attempt. Jumped up and furiously began to look around. <laughs> furious? How do you furiously look around? It's like, oh, I see something! Oh! <laughs> yes, I was in my flat again. At first, I was paralyzed. The shock was so strong my brain was unable to process what was going on. I just stood and gazed on the screen of the monitor on the table opposite to me. I couldn't think. I even forgot to breathe. Finally, my mind began to clear. What happened, anyway? I fell asleep on the bus, going to the district center. Oh, maybe? Question? Yeah, something like that. And Slavia was sitting by my side. And now I'm back here. Seems like during the week I spent there in the camp, I had gotten so used to the fact that I'd never returned to my previous life that now I just have no idea how to react to all of this. After all, my first main wish was to go home. But in the end, everything was like a bad movie. At last I had come back, but I'm still shocked. No, I felt no fear. I was rather interested and upset. After all, I'd already made up my mind to start a new life with Slavia, leaving all my problems behind. Insult, suffering, self-examination, unfinished affairs, and plans for the future. Obviously, that life could not be worse than this one, at least. But there's no returning to it now. On the other hand, if someone had told me a week ago that I would be sent into a different world just like that in the blink of an eye, I would not have believed them. So what makes such a fantastic event happening again so impossible? Moving my legs with difficulty, I went to the kitchen, got a glass of water, and returned to the room. The ice-cold liquid with a disgusting aftertaste of bleaching powder revived me to some degree. You need to get a new faucet. Now I have to decide what to do next. Suddenly I realized that I could not bear the si silence. After turning to the computer, I launched a random song into play and I managed to calm down somewhat. Good old new age music to calm your nerves. And seriously speaking, what can I do? Recently I realized that absolutely nothing is up to me. But someone's will, I by someone's will, I was pulled out of my usual world and then sent back. No answers were found during the week in the camp. But what's the point in speculating now? I must forget everything that happened. Like a bad dream. Maybe those were just hallucinations. I don't really care now. The only thing that prevented me from completely forgetting this short period of my life was Slavia. I recalled her smiling all the time we spent together. From the meeting on the first day to the night in the forest where the button on was really good and our departure from the camp. My heart furiously jumped inside my chest, spreading a oppressive pain all through my body. I liked her at first sight. So gentle, caring, understanding. Just like that, oh, just, and the hair, what was her name? The one that helped antisocial fellow like me deal with, I don't know, there's a lot of them like that, it's basically like everything. If you think about it, there are no such people in real life. Slavia asked nothing in return. Needed no encouragement, never expected to be understood or praised for her work. She just was believing herself, a girl that cannot exist in real life. If you think clearly, that's really exactly what she was. It seemed like I've seen one single week-long dream. About the pioneer camp, Soviet teenagers, with cars, and camp leader. About a warm summer nights and gatherings around a fire. About lighthearted children's games and simple human joys. About one moment that lasted a week. And the everlasting summer! But not just seem. I've been there. I was a part of it. Everything. 
my eyes unwilling, filled with tears. Eh, not tears of pain or despair, tears of sorrow and bright melancholy. Even if everything is over, I experience something that most people would never even dream about. Slavia's image flashed in my head, brighter and brighter. I would love so much for her to return to that camp with me. Maybe I have nothing to offer her now, but my entire life is still ahead of me. I guess I learned a lot of useful lessons with these events. I couldn't help thinking it, it all seems too perfect, like it was written according to some simple plan. A loser hero, a fantastic incident in a wonderful transformation. I guess it's not possible. Not in this life. Will I become the person that I was before only a day or a week later? Well, it's the most realistic course of events. One thing's for sure, I'll never be able to go back. No. Oh. Music. About a month has passed since I returned from Silvermark, or to say it more correctly, since I woke up. I returned to my usual life as a loner, surfing the internet for days, going outside only to shop as expected, it began to suit me again. Well, obviously, moments of melancholy and depression occurred. A person like me just can't do without them, but they lasted no longer than usual, except those times while sleeping. I returned to that sun with a... That is... <laughs> Weird. That is sad. But after waking, I try to banish these thoughts as soon as possible. After all, what's the point of dreaming of becoming a wizard? Even if miracles happen, I was proof that they do. They happen completely independent of us. The word sweet doesn't give you a sweet taste regardless of how often you pronounce it. But nevertheless, something has changed in my existence. Formerly, I didn't think ahead. I didn't really care how long I would live, whether one week or forty years. But now I looked forward to it with optimism. Not like I tried to change anything or to become a different person, but the world now seemed more understandable. Not simple, not friendly, no not friendly at all, but understandable. Before I just couldn't cope with some events or facts, though well, I kind of realized that they were for some reason, that they were for a reason. Now I started seeing my life as simpler, what happens is happens for the best. Or at least, it happens, and I can live with it. And if I can't, I'm powerless in that case. I am not a wizard, Harry. I guess I started smiling more often, or at least I didn't carry that look of deep universal frustration 24-7. Even my acquaintances on the internet, obviously, noticed some change in me. And their opinions agree that these changes are good. Now I think I'm ready to live on, thanks to Silverlock and its inhabitants. Without them, I wouldn't be able. It was the beginning of January. I am looking at a picture of myself. I haven't seen a picture like this in so long! <laughs> it's been forever. The city had barely recovered from the New Year hangover. The streets are almost empty during the day, not to mention the nights. But the only stranger walking down the street seemed extremely busy from with businesses. Rushing somewhere for that reason, that couldn't wait. I had no reason, I just decided to have a little walk. It's necessary to get some fresh air sometimes. And then he meets Slavia. A winter's night and the best time to be alone with yourself. I always thought that true solitude can be found in a crowd rather than a burning hot desert, boundless pain, or a top of a mountain covered with snow. In the stream of people, words, thoughts, or aspirations, everyone had their own aim and direction. In the stream of people, words, thoughts, or aspirations, everyone... Oh, um, yeah. And throwing them on, deserve no attention from us! Maybe they were like vectors. When, when I hear the word vector, I think of arms that rip people open. That's probably not that. Moving from different directions. They never meet a Cartesian coordinates. It's the same thing here. These people are walking, running in one direction, and I'm dragging along in the other. But did I feel lonely? Before, yes, but now, highly unlikely. In the bright, blinding lights of the city, the noise of cars and the swirling crowds, I enjoyed a heavenly symphony of silence. But now the situation is slightly different. Then it was just me in the streets, so I'm alone, not only within my own self, but within the whole world. Being a sand green in the desert is not the same thing as being a water drop in an ocean. What? <laughs> I did not understand that. In the crowd, nobody noticed me. Nobody paid attention. But now everyone who peeks out the window, or see me while driving past, will think, 
Why can't he just stay home? Maybe he has some urgent matter. Suppose he's mad or maybe he's just drunk. I never like standing out of the crowd when it's not appropriate, so opposing society was never an option for me. But now it was different. As if I tried to tell somebody, look, I could be happy too. You need your TV and hot chocolate, but I got the snow, the night, a dark room, and a dull monitor screen. You guys are all scrubs! Look, I'm not worse than all of you. I felt sadness in my heart, but it was a serene sadness. Do I really need things that they have and I do not? Maybe I have something much more valuable. I didn't know this, so I came to the bus stop of the 410 round. This brings back memories. <laughs> Look at this little cheesy girl on the <laughs> sign. It gets my attention every single time. Okay. I sat down and room in my pockets, trying to find cigarettes. However, the packet was empty. Fine. I crumpled it up and threw it into a bin. Eh! Get away, paper! Maybe I'll get healthier. A lonely star was shining in the sky. Today I read on the internet that according to the calculations of scientists, one of the most beautiful astronomical events has already ceased to exist, and we'll see it only decades later. That's... <laughs> okay? That's... cool. Maybe the star has already exploded as well, and now it was only a beautiful image in the night sky. Somewhere near the lost planet on the edge of the galaxy. However, why does one or another thing exist? Is it simply because it's just there and it has a shape and can be touched? Or is it because we believe that it exists? At first thought, the answer is simple. But on the other hand, even if this star is gone, we can still see its cold light. Maybe it helps someone to get out of the snowy winter forest, gave someone hope or a bit of warmth to someone else. Could a simple astronomical object that exploded God knows when do all this? Can billions of people believe in something that doesn't really exist? But a belief itself never made any object real. At least none that I've ever heard of.